السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم عما بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب الشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی رب زدنی علما اللہم فقحنا فی الدین آمین اہلا و سہلا مرحبا آئی ویلکم یو آل How are you all? I hope you are doing well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your coming here and grant you the best of rewards, bless you with health and wellness and keep you in his protection. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the excellent understanding of the deen so we can be safe from shirk and innovations. What would be the benefit? Because we can avoid polytheism and innovations due to the knowledge of religion. Because the lack of knowledge or incorrect knowledge of deen may lead a person to shirk, innovations, misunderstandings and superstition. Last time, we talked about the innovations of Muharram. Today, we will talk about the common innovations of the month of Safar. In our society, on one hand, many superstitions, misunderstandings and bad omens are associated with the month of Safar. And on the other hand, people have invented self-made solutions to deal with these superstitions and bad omens. The month of Safar is the second month of the Islamic year. This month that follows Muharram is also known as Safar al-Muzaffar. Safar means empty. The word, Urdu word Sifar, zero is also derived from it since zero has no value. Now let's find out why the Mushrikeen of Arab named this month Safar meaning empty that followed the three sacred months of Dhul Qaeda, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram. The first reason was that during the sacred months they couldn't indulge in war and strife and robbery that is they couldn't rob the travelers on their way. These restrictions would end as soon as the month of Safar started and they would come out of their homes with the intentions of robbing and looting and war leaving behind their empty homes. This is the reason they named this month Safar meaning empty. The second reason for naming this month Safar was that they would rob and loot and empty out the homes of other people in this month. Also, often the people would leave their homes empty and move to the mountains because of the fear of robbers in this month. So these were the few reasons for having homes empty. The people of Arab used to say, Bait Sifar Min Al Mata Bait Un Sifar O Min Al Mata Meaning the house was emptied of its contents. The third reason was that due to this war and strife, bloodshed and looting, this month was considered empty from Allah's blessings. Therefore, it was named Safar that it was devoid of all blessings and considered inauspicious. Therefore, since the age of Jahiliya, it is considered ominous or inauspicious. It was said that trouble and calamities befall this month. Therefore, this month is bad and ominous. As we talked about it earlier, the Arabs would leave their homes empty and say Safar al-Makan, meaning Safar arrived and houses are empty. Why was there looting and empty homes? The bloodshed and lack of blessings during this month. Do you have any idea? Yes, that is correct. It was due to their own actions and deeds. The only solution to this was that they should have reformed themselves and avoid the bloodshed and war. Instead, they invented solutions. Firstly, they made up superstitions and innovations and omens related to this month and then to precaution themselves from these, they created more innovations. This thing kept on going and unfortunately the majority in our society have many misunderstandings about the month of Safar. Many superstitions are fabricated and bad omens are associated with this month. And then to safeguard oneself against these many innovations have been invented as treatment. Today we will talk about all of these one by one inshallah. Let us learn about the strata that have little to no knowledge of the Quran and Hadith. They grieve a great deal during Muharram, then indulge in a great deal of innovation during Safar. Fearing the superstitions and omens associated with this month, they start making various innovations to avoid the misfortune of this month. Let us first take a look at all the innovations and omens and superstitions associated with this month. The month of Safar is considered ominous and devoid of all mercy and blessings. 
It is said that trouble, calamities and disasters befall this month. It is considered as a month of suffering and failure. It is considered to be inauspicious and ominous. Marriages do not take place in this month. Children's aqiqa is not done. Nothing is celebrated. The first 13 days of Safar are considered specially ominous and sharp and called Tera Tezi or the sharp 13. To ward off the misfortune of these days, chickpeas are cooked and distributed. 365 balls of dough are th thrown in pools and ponds so the misfortune and calamities can be avoided and risk can increase. So they recite Surah Muzammil 311 times. Just like the Kunde of Rajab, on the last Wednesday of Safar, the festival of Kunde is celebrated. They say that Rasulullah regained his health on the last Wednesday of Safar and came out for visitation. Therefore, to commemorate that occasion, we celebrate on this day. This is all fabricated. Because Rasulullah started falling ill during the last week of Safar and passed away on the 12th of Rabiul Awal. They take a day off from work, close their business, especially the labors, take their day off and demand sweets. Sweet meats are distributed and it's considered to be a great reward to give a day off to those who specially work by hand, that is labor jobs. Churi, a mixture of cooked dough and sugar, is made on the last Wednesday of Safar and it is said that Rasulullah regained his health and ate churi on this day. Think about it yourself. Who eats churi as soon as they get better from being sick? Women dress up on this day and people go out for fun. Similarly, on the night of the last Wednesday of Safar, people gather in the mosques between Maghrib and Isha and ask a scribe to write the seven eyes of, of Salam on the prophets, such as Salamun ala Nuhin fil alameen. Then they dissolve this writing in the water and drink it. They consider it favorable that something good will happen to them now. This is an innovation and a shirk. There is no evidence of this from the Quran or Hadith. Similarly, some people considered it a bad omen to visit a sick person on this last Wednesday. People with such a wrong faith use a topic and fabricated Hadith as evidence. Yawm al Yawm Nahsim Mustamir Wednesday is a day of continuous disaster. Narrated by al Tabrani in al Ausat. Ibn al Jawzi and Ibn al Sakhawi said that this is fabricated. Some people like to say that whoever visits the sick on a Wednesday to visit them and ask them about their health, ayah, that the sick person would die on Thursday. After hearing about all these bidat and pointless, baseless things, we should make the dua, A'udhu billahi an akuna min al jahileen. Meaning, I seek refuge in Allah from being among the ignorant. This dua was made by Prophet Musa alayhi salam in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 67. Now let's a look, take a look at this topic in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a long hadith and a part of it is La Safar. There is no reality in Safar. Hadith reference is Muslim 2220 and Bukhari 5387. The month of Safar is not cursed or unlucky no matter what people think in their times. In fact, there is no reality of all this. Prophet Wasallam rejected this aqeedah that the Mushrikeen of Makkah had. At the time of Jahiliyyah, the Mushrikeen of Makkah used to think that Safar is a month in which problems, difficulties and bad luck curses occur. After what the Prophet Wasallam has said by the permission of Allah, nobody should dare call the month of Safar the month of bad luck or failure. If today there is someone who does believe this, then they are doing what the Mushrikeen of Makkah did. Just like normal and regular days, we can give charity in these days as well. But making the special intention that it is the month of Safar and it is a month of bad luck etc. And then boiling chickpeas to distribute them or giving small dough balls to fish just so that the bad luck or problems can be shooed away is a bidda. Every innovation is misguidance and every misguidance is something that leads to the fire of hell and we should protect ourselves from it. To say no to weddings or functions in this month is also a wrong thing. To re reject this ideology, marrying in the month of Safar would be a possible action. This month is also known as Safar al muzaffar which means the month of success. Who can speak more truthfully than the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Safar al-Muzaffar is a month of success. Therefore, whoever takes a bad omen in the month of Safar will commit shirk. Narrated by Ahmad and authenticated by Almani. Man raddattuhu tiyaratu an hajatihi faqad ashrak qalu Ya Rasulullah, wa ma kafaratu kafaratu thalika. قال يقول اللهم لا طير إلا طيرك ولا خير إلا خيرك ولا إله غيرك Whoever takes a superstition for his need and returns has committed shirk. This can be explained by an example. A person left his home and on the way he saw a black cat. Thinking about bad luck, instead of completing his journey to his destination, he goes back home. So, for him to return back home without reaching his destination because of this superstition is shirk. To stay safe from kufr, going into iman is important. There is no month, no time, no time on the clock that is bad luck. It is in Surah Bani Israel about misfortune. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكل إنسان ألزمناه طائره في عنقه ونخرج له يوم القيامة كتابا يلقاه منشورا and for every person we have imposed his fate upon his neck and we will produce for him on the day of resurrection a record which he will encounter spread open verse number 13 this verse teaches us that the bad luck of a person is related to his own actions whereas a person thinks that bad luck is external and comes from the outside in islam there is no month place or thing that is worthless but it is action and doing an attitude of a person that becomes a test for him and like the saying goes what you sow so shall you reap Surah An-Nisa also mentions ma asabaka min hasanatin fa min Allah fa min Allah fa min Allah wa ma asabaka min sayyi'atin fa min nafsik wa arsalnaka lin-nas rasulan wa kafa billahi shahida whatever of good reaches you you is from Allah and whatever of evil befalls you is from yourself and we have sent you O Muhammad as a messenger to mankind and Allah is sufficient as a witness verse number 79 Islam does not allow Muslims to follow the actions and the ways of the people of Jahiliya one who does so becomes void of Allah's mercy in Sahih al-Bukhari it says أبغض الناس إلى الله ثلاثة ملحد في الحرم ومبتغ في الإسلام سنة الجاهلية ومطلب دم امرئ بغير حق ليهري قدمه Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The most cursed persons to Allah are three. That is far from mercy of Allah. Number one, a person who, commit, who commits cruelty, sin and inequity in the haram, uh, in the house of Allah. Second, a person who seeks that the traditions of the pre-Islamic period of ignorance should remain in Islam. And number three, a person who seeks to shed somebody's blood without any right. May Allah protect us all from it. Nowadays, in our society, we adopt lots of things which drags us towards kufr and shirk. We should know them properly, so we can avoid committing a sin without knowing it. Wrapping a black piece of cloth around the arm to protect oneself from evil eyes and all kinds of evil. For example, wearing bracelet of vow or ring for health or black thread or amulet. Similarly, to protect from evil eye, wrapping of black fabric behind the cars is all shirk. A Muslim should have firm belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because all types of happiness, profit, sorrow or losses are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can be harmed without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 51 قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Ayah number 51 Say, nothing will befall us except what Allah has ordained for us. He is our master and in Allah let all the faithful put their trust. 
This thought keeps a person content and in peace in all situations. That whatever is happening, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah must have some wisdom behind it. This trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firms and matures a faith on Allah. And a person understands that the real protection is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are told to ask Allah this dua after every mandatory salah. Allah la mani alima a'atwait wa la mu'atiha lima mani'at wa la yanfa'u dhal jadd min kal jadd. O oh Allah, no one can stop whatever you give and no one can give whatever you stop and no wealth can be beneficial in front of your punishment. When a person has strong faith that all blessings and favors are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who gives health after sickness. He protects us from evil and hardships. He protects us from envy of envious people. He protects from whispers of shaitan. That is my Lord, my creator, my sustainer is near me in my worldly tests, my friend, my helper. He loves me a lot. Then with this strong belief, a person never indulges into innovations or polytheism. He protects himself from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He refrains himself from committing sins. He learns deen to follow the orders of Quran and Sunnah to avoid committing sins or making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry. He tries to understand the Quran through translation and explanations, learn hadith so he can follow orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with its real meaning and understanding. He tries to act upon all commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hence protect himself from sins and innovations. Let's review what we have learned from today's lecture. We don't have to act upon baseless rituals. Instead, one has to acquire the knowledge of Islam and open-heartedly, one has to follow each and every command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. By gaining the understanding of Islam, we will be able to avoid all kinds of shirk and bidah, polytheism and innovations. We have to correct the misconceptions that people have about the month of Safar and get rid of all the superstitions. Tell them that these 12 months have been made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that man can count and calculate the years. By these months and years it forms time and Allah has forbidden to curse the time as bad. There is a hadith Qudsi in which Allah says, Qala Allah azza wa jal, yu'udhin ibn Adam, yasubbu al-dahar wa ana al-dahar. بيد الأمر أقلب الليل والنهار Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه reported I heard Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم saying Allah the exalted and glorious said the son of Adam abuses dahr the time whereas I am dahr since in my hand are the day and the night Allah has not made any month unlucky, nor has he made any hour unlucky. Man's luck and bad luck are due to his own actions. We have to avoid the innovations and superstitions of the pre-Islamic era. We should have weddings and other celebrations in the month of Safar because the Prophet wasallam said, Safar is the month of success. We should not take bad omens from anyone because it is also a kind of shirk. Because the omen of every human being hangs around his neck, so misfortune is related to the deeds of human beings. We have to correct our deeds. We have to improve our attitudes. We have to improve our morals. The biography of the Prophet ﷺ is to be read so that we can adopt the same morality. Whenever something bad happens to us, we have to see for ourselves what, what went wrong and then first correct ourselves, inshallah. Don't wear black clothes on the arms. Don't wear mantras or threads. Don't wear amulets. Do not tie a black cloth under your car because doing all these is shirk. Strengthen your relationship with Almighty Allah. Perform obligations. Perform nawafil, zikr and askar. Recitation of Quran. Charity should be done. Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything. Talk to Allah is to trust in only Allah. In every difficulty and trial, one has to seek help from Allah alone. May Allah grant us the best of them all. The month of Safar brought many blessings, happiness and success for all of us. Many prayers for all of you. Take care of yourselves. Remember our entire team in your precious prayers. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.